all right you are welcome again today let's talk about the morgan's law in set theories the morgan's law in set theory so the the morgan's law we have number one a union b complement is equal to a complement intersection b complement and then number two a intersection b complement is equal to a complement union b complement so I want to show that this law is true we want to prove this law okay please i want you to watch this video very carefully and pay attention is about set theory and logic now before we continue i want to lay some basic foundations about union of set intersection of set and complement number one we've talked about union and we say whenever we have something like a union b we are talking about a set of element let's say x such that x exists in a or it exists in b okay so we say a you know b is a set of x element such that x exists in a or it exists in b and then we also talk about a intersection b say it is a set of element x such that x exists in a and x exists in b all right we also considered a complement we write a complement this way a superscript c or a prime and we say that it is a set of element x such that x exists in a universal set but this element do not exist in a so all the element in the universal set but not in the main set in question is called a complement do you understand this please if you want more of this i want you to check on our videos basics of set theory we discuss much on this intersection union of set and the complement please search for the video and watch it also now let's continue having known these basics let's pick number one we have a union b in bracket complement is equal to a complement intersection b complement now let's assume that we are talking about an element let's say let x be an arbitrary element of the set a union b complement let's assume that there is an element in this set a union b complement so we said if x exists in this set a union b complement it means that or it implies that x does not exist in the set a union b hello you see x exists in a union b complement that implies that x does not exist in a union b you know we talk about union of set we talk about complement complement we just discussed that a complement means the element that exists in universal set but do not exist in the set a we call it a complement so here if x exists in a union b complement that means that x is not in a union b you get it right good and if 
H is not in A union B, it implies that X do not exist in A or X do not exist in B. We are talking about union. Is that true? Yes. And then we say that union is talking about a set of elements in A or in B. It's not there. You get it, right? And at the same time, if it is in one of them, we also have it. Is that true? Yes, it is true. If this element X is in A, I think it will be in this union. That is to say that X does not exist in A. And at the same time, X do not exist in B. Hello. That is what it means. We say X do not exist in A or because of the union, X do not exist in B. Then you discover that had it been it existed in any of them, it should have been in the union. So we say it, X do not exist in A and at the same time, it did not exist in B. So if X is not in A, that means that X is in A complement. Also, if X is not in B, that means that X is in B complement. This is it. That means X exists in A complement and X exists in B complement. Is that true? Yes. Okay, now, if X exists in A complement and X exists in B complement. That is to say that X exists in A complement intersection B complement. Is that true? Yes, intersection. Something that exists in this and in this. Then we say that X exists in A complement intersection B complement. You understand this law, right? Okay, here we started from saying that X exists in the set A union B complement. And we end up seeing that X is also in A complement intersection B complement. Is that true? Yes, we have seen that X, this same element X, is in A union B complement. It also exists in A complement intersection B complement. Now let's go otherwise, conversely. That is, before we do that, we are going to say that A union B complement exists in or is contained in A complement intersection B complement. You get it right? Uh -huh. Now we may use of this sign this way. Now let's go. Conversely, let X be any arbitrary element of A complement intersection B complement. You know, this law, we started showing that A union B complement is the same as A complement intersection B complement. That is the first one. So here we are going to take it backward. That is, we are going to say that A complement intersection B is equal to A union B complement. Okay? Now let's go. We say let X be any arbitrary element of A complement intersection B complement. That is to say that X exists in a complement intersection B complement. So if X exists in A complement intersection B complement, it means that X is in A complement and X exists in B complement. You get it? You know, we say intersection. It exists in this and this. So if X exists in A complement intersection B complement, Splitting it into two now, it means that X exists in A complement and X exists in B complement. And if X exists in A complement, it also means that X is not in A. And X 
that exists in B complement also means that X is not in B. You get it right? Yes. Okay. If X is not in A and X is not in B, uh, we are not sure. But let's assume that X is not in A or X is not in B. Let's put it this way. Let's assume that X is not in A or X is not in B. So if X is not in A or X is not in B, that is to say that X is not in A union B. X is not in A union B. So if X is not in A union B, it implies that X is in a union b complement x is not in a union b it means that it is in a union b complement so here we started by saying that x exists in a complement intersection b complement and then end up having that x also exists in a union b complement so, therefore, we say that A, complement, intersection B, complement, is contained in A, union B, complement. Now, look at our conclusion. Look at this conclusion. Pay attention to it. The first conclusion, we say that A, union B, complement, is contained in A, complement, intersection B, complement. And here we have another conclusion that say that A complement, intersection B complement is contained in A union B complement. So therefore, comparing these two conclusions, we say that A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. Is that clear? Yes, this is for the first law. Let's also go for the second one. I hope this law is interesting. It's just all about logic. Just reasoning, okay? Now let's go. Number two. It says, A, intersection B, in bracket, complement, is equal to A, complement, union, B, complement. The first thing we see, let X be an... The first thing we say, let X be any arbitrary element of A, intersection B, complement. Okay, so let X be element that exists in A, intersection B, complement. So we say that X exists in A, intersection B, complement. It means that or it implies that X is not in a intersection b hello yes you say if x exists in a intersection b complement that means x is not in a intersection b you know this a intersection b is a set you get it and we have another set a intersection b complement now let's go so if x do not exist in the set a intersection b it implies that x do not exist in a and x does not exist in b you get it intersection it does not exist in a and it does not exist in b but had it been that it existed in one of them maybe the statement would have not be true. That means you are going to say that X does not exist in A or it does not exist in B. So if X does not exist in A or X does not exist in B, it implies that X exists in A prime. That is X exists in A complement or X exists in B complement. You get it? So if x does not exist in a that means x exists in a complement and then we say or x does not exist in b it implies that x exists in b complement so if x exists in 
A complement or X exists in B complement. It implies that X exists in A complement union B complement. So here, we say that X exists in A intersection B complement. That is, we begin with this, right? And we end up seeing that X exists in A complement union B complement. That is to say that what we begin with is contained in what we just found out now. We say that A intersection B complement is contained in A complement union B complement. Then conversely, you say let X be any arbitrary element of the set A complement union B complement. Let X be an arbitrary element of the set A complement union B complement. So we say if X exists in A complement union B complement, it implies that X exists in A complement or X exists in B complement. So, if X exists in A complement or X exists in B complement, it also implies that X is not in A or X is not in B. You get it? Uh -huh. Then we we'll say, if X is not in A or X do not exist in B, it shows that X is not in A intersection B. Hello? You know, we may use of all. All is talking about intersection. That means X do not exist in A intersection B. Then if X does not exist in A intersection B, that implies that X exists in A intersection B complement. If it doesn't exist in A intersection B, definitely it will exist in A intersection B complement. So here we discover that we begin with A complement union B complement, the set. We say that X exists in A complement union B complement. And we end up having that X also existed in A intersection B complement. That is to show that A complement union B complement is contained in A intersection B complement. So with this conclusion, two conclusion, we therefore say that A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. Is that clear? Yes. So we have shown in this lesson the proof of the Morgan's law. You get it? Please, I want you to pay attention to this watch this all over and like our videos okay yes thank you for watching stay blessed